Let us remember that there is a door that is set before us today. It has been set before us today by Christ. And then there are other doors that sit before us as well. Those doors being doors that are of the world. The door sat before us by Christ, it leads to life everlasting in his pasture. To those who choose to enter the door by faith in him. To move by such faith, it requires one to, as we saw in my first sermon in this series of sermons, it requires one to lay aside their skepticism. It requires one to also believe. To believe, have faith. To believe that they can be forgiven. To believe that they are worthy of saving. And to believe that they can and will be saved by Christ. Now, there's something else that is required for one to be able to enter into his door, to be able to enter into the pastor of Christ. Something that we must also understand is that that word at the top of that board over there plays a major role in one being able to enter in and to dwell in the pastor of Christ. The word that they won't be able to see on video that I have on the board there is what? Character. Character. Character, I want you to understand today, character is important. Mm -hmm. We know that character is important because Jesus, he taught us that we should love. Mm -hmm. He taught us that we should love the Lord, not half-heartedly, mm -hmm. but with our whole heart. Then on top of that, Jesus said that in that love, we should also love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So a character of love is incredibly important. I want you to understand today. A character of love is required. It is required to be able to enter and dwell in the pastor of Christ. Do you believe that today? Is your character, is it one that is of love? Who will you be? In the 22nd chapter of Proverbs and in the first verse, if you'll turn over to the 22nd chapter of Proverbs for me and with me today, You'll see in the 22nd chapter of Proverbs and the first verse that the proverb tells us that a name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Again, the 22nd chapter of Proverbs and the first verse says there that a name is to be chosen rather than great riches. A name is to be chosen. Then we'll see there that the proverb said that you should choose to love favor rather than loving silver and gold. You choose today. You choose today who you will be. You choose today your character. You choose today who you will be known as in this life that you live at the end of the day when all is said and done. You see, we were made to grow. We were made to grow and prosper together in, in unity, in love, choosing life over the riches of this world. We should love and we should value helping and lifting each other up rather than living for selfish gain. Again, I ask you today, who will you be? Will you be a character of love or will you have a selfish character about yourself? There in the 22nd chapter of Proverbs, if you take a look at the fourth verse, the proverb, it tells us that to those who choose humility, to those who choose to fear the Lord belongs riches and honor 
and life. Again, those who choose to love life over the riches of this world, we will be favored and we will be greatly blessed. So again, I want you to understand today, character is important. Who you choose to be in the life that you live is important. The character that we should aim to be should be a character that is of love, a character that is of grace, a character that has humility, a character that is God fearing. Again, let me ask you today, who will you be? Now, if you will turn with me over to the second chapter of first John bookmark the fourth chapter of John, just place the uh, fourth chapter of Genesis. I should say, just put something in place there. We're going to come back to it. And you'll also want to put something in place of first John as well. We're going to go back and forth between Genesis and in first John here. Now in his epistle, John, he also spoke about, he spoke about character and we'll see that he will define the difference between two character choices that, that we have to choose between making today. So we must pay very close attention to what John says here in first John, the second chapter of first John, where we'll see there, for example, in the third verse that John, he wrote, we know that we know him that is the Lord. If we keep his commandments, he said, we know that we know him. We know that we know God. If we keep his commandments, he then wrote and said that in the fourth verse, he said that he who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments. John said that he is a what? Liar. He is a liar. That is his character. One who says that, that he knows the Lord, but does not actually move to, to keep his commandments. John said that he is a liar and the truth is not in him. Who will you be? Will you be a liar or will you be one that moves in the truth today? You see, there are many that love to say that, that they know the Lord. There are many today that say that love to say that they, they love God, that they are Christians, that they are in fellowship with him today. However, Many of those who say such things, they aren't actually in fellowship with the Lord today. They aren't actually in fellowship with the Lord today because they aren't living in obedience to his word. Let's be very clear about this. If you live in disobedience, disobeying God's command, which again, God's command is a command that we should love him, that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. If you aren't doing that today, you are living disobediently, which means that you are living sinfully today. Sinner being a sinner is the character that you have chosen to be. Now, if you take a look at the next chapter, the third chapter there in first John, we'll see there in the seventh through the 10th verse, we'll see where John, he said there in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested, are defined, if you will. He said there in the seventh verse, those who practice righteousness, he said, we'll have a righteous character just as the Lord himself is righteous. If again, you practice righteousness, your character will be a righteous character. That is not to say that you are God. That is to say that you will be of his character. That is to say that you will be of God is what just says there. However, Take a look at that eighth verse there. Those who are of sin, 
John said. He said that they are of the devil, with their character being just as the devil's character. Then John, he concluded there in the 10th verse, that whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God nor are those who do not love their brother. Again, look closely at those words that, that John is, is sharing with us today. There in that 10th verse, where again, he said, whoever does not practice righteousness, you can go around and you can say that you're a Christian all day long, night and day. You can post it on social media. You can get on TV and you can say, I am a Christian. But John, he said that whoever does not actually live it, who does not practice righteousness, they are not of God. If you do not love your brother, John is saying there to you today, you are not of God. You can say that you are a child of God, but do you love your brother? Do you love your sister? And when I ask that, I'm not talking about blood brothers and blood sisters. I'm talking about all of those that are around you. Have you chosen love today? Are you living in love today? Is love your character? Is righteousness, is that your character? Or is sin, hate, bitterness, is that your character today? The character and the path one should take, John, he writes there in the 11th verse, he said that it's been shared with us in a message from the beginning. That message again is that, guess what? We should love one another. And then John, he said there in the 12th verse, a, a very dire one warning there that again, we must pay very close attention to. In this warning, John said, should one choose to turn away from the path of love, he warned that one should not choose to do as Cain, who John said was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. Going down the path of Cain. Let me tell you something. Going down the path that Cain chose to go down, that's a path that nobody should be choosing to go down today. Going down the path that Cain went down, that's a very dark path to be on. And again, nobody should dare go down that dark path. This is a thought that puts me in mind of Yoda, character from, from Star Wars. To where Yoda, he said in Empire Strike Back, once you start down the dark path forever, will it dominate your destiny? Is what Yoda said. Now we, in our response to reading today, going back to the fourth chapter of Genesis, again, like I said, just hold your finger there in 1 John. Don't lose place of 1 John. But we read responsibly today the story of Cain and his brother Abel in the fourth chapter of Genesis. And, and after reading his, his story there in our response of reading, I don't know if you caught this or not, but we see that our story and his story actually has one thing in common. I don't know if we ever really pick up on it, but yes, our story and Cain's story actually shares one thing that is in common. Cain's story began with the same choice that's given to all of us, given to, to all people by the Lord. The choice being, what will one bring? What will one give to God in how they choose to live in this world? What will you bring? What will you give to God in the life that you live. That's something that should always be on our mind and how we choose to go about day by day in this world. 
You know, something that we must remember is that God, he has given all of us the gift of life. This life that we live, being able to live, being able to breathe, we should not be taking that for granted. Life should be impossible, but we are here today. Think about it. Think about all it is that you have gone through in your life. You know, I always bring up my five years of dialysis. I always bring up my, my kidney transplant, having, having renal failure. I always bring that up because it keeps me humble. Because it's certainly possible that I would not be here today, but I am here today. And now again, know that all of us, we have those same stories. One thing could have broke one way or the other way, and we would not be here today. So the fact that we are living and breathing, that's something that we should never, we should never take it for granted. Because again, life itself, it is a gift. Therefore, we should always take into serious consideration the choices that we make with this life that has been given to us, not through our own strength, not through our own power. Yes, we were born through our, our parents. Yes, we were born through them. But again, this life has been given to us by God who created mankind and breathed into mankind's nostrils and we became a living soul. So again, we should take into serious consideration the choices that we make and how we choose to, to treat this life that has been given to us by God. So when we take a look there at the fourth chapter of Genesis, and we take a look at the second and the third verse there. We're told that at an appointed time, Cain, he brought forth an offering to God that was the fruit of the ground. That's what we see there in the second. And again, taking a look at the second and third verse, just the opening of the fourth chapter there. Considering that the scripture tells us he was a tiller of the ground, a farmer, if you will, him bringing forth the, the fruit of, of his labor, it makes sense to us as that being his offering that he gave to the Lord. Now, some of us, First time Bible readers, we will look at that and we will say, oh, well, nothing seems bad about that. He's just bringing forth the fruit of his labor, right? Mm -hmm. However, again, just taking a look there from the second through the fourth verse there, we'll see that Abel, that again, he did just as Cain did. Abel, his brother, we are told there that he was a keeper of sheep. In other words, Abel was a shepherd. There was often a role that was given to the youngest ones, the younger ones. We saw that with David and, and his brothers. Mm -hmm. Now we're told there in the fourth verse that when, when he came before the Lord, Abel will see that he offered the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. Now, many of us, we don't understand that this wasn't an easy choice for, for Abel to make. Again, he was a keeper of the flock. He was, he was a shepherd. I, I can't, Imagine, you know, this is the, the firstborn of the flock, you know, the, the keeper of the flock, the shepherd, they look over their flock. They watch over them. They, they are the protectors. Mm -hmm. And, and Jesus, he taught in a parable. If, if a shepherd lose one of his 100, mm -hmm. nine, having that 99 isn't enough. They are going to go out and they're going to find that one of their flock and they're going to bring them back. And so I want you to understand here that the choice that Abel made here, it was not easy for him to give up the firstborn of, of his flock, but he did it. Mm -hmm. And so we'll see there in that scripture that after the giving of their offerings there, the scripture, it makes it very clear here. Again, just taking a look at the fourth and now the fifth verse there makes it very clear here that the Lord respected Abel's offering, but he did not respect Cain's offering. And it's from this, this moment forward in his story that Cain, he took a turn to the dark path. And the question that, that some of us, we, we may begin to have is, well, why did God respect Abel's offering. Why did God not respect Cain's offering is what some of us 
may begin to wonder, some of us may begin to ask that question. If you turn over and you take a look at the 11th chapter of Hebrews and the fourth verse there in the epistle to the Hebrews, you'll actually get an answer to that question as to why it was that God respected Abel's offering and did not respect Cain's offering. The scripture there in the 11th chapter of the epistle to the Hebrews and the fourth verse, the writer states there that by faith, okay, said by faith, Abel came before the Lord again by faith. I, I would highlight that in your Bible or just circle it, underline that there in your Bible if you can. By faith, Abel came before the Lord and offered a more excellent sacrifice is what the scripture says there. He offered a more excellent sacrifice than his brother Cain. You see, there's a difference here between how Abel came before the Lord and how Cain came before the Lord. And that difference is what is significant. It is what is important for us to know and for us to understand today. Abel came before God again by faith. Him coming before the Lord by faith, that implies that he came before the Lord with a sincere heart a genuine heart. He desired to come before the Lord. He wanted to come before the Lord. He wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. And and again, in his offering here, we should understand, yes, even though it may have been hard for him to give up the firstborn of his flock, we'll see that Abel out of sincerity, and again, by faith, he offered it up by love. Out of love and out of thanksgiving. Again, Abel understood what we should understand today. Abel understood that the life that was given to him was by the Lord. His occupation that he had, it was again given to him by the Lord. The flock that he was watching over. And again, it was given to him by the Lord. And so Abel, he wasn't stingy with what it was that he had. Abel, I want you to understand today, he gave what was most special to him. What are you doing with your life today? What are you giving to the Lord? Right? Now there's Cain who on the other hand, what what the epistle to the Hebrews there in the 11th chapter of Hebrews in the fourth verse, what it implies for us is that Cain didn't come forth in the same manner. Cain did not come forth by faith. Cain didn't care. Were Abel desired to be there with his offering? Cain had no desire to be there. Yeah, he gave from from the fruit of his labor, as we see there in that verse. But I want you to understand something today. Cain's giving, it lacked a few things here. Let's notice. Cain's giving, it lacked faith. Therefore, it lacked sincerity. It lacked genuineness. It lacked sincerity. It lacked love. It lacked care. It lacked being grateful, thanksgiving, it was not there in his giving. And he thought that God was going to respect his offering. God don't respect such giving. God does not respect such an offering. It is shown to us in the first chapter of Isaiah, in the 10th through the 13th verse, that God does not respect when one comes before him and their heart isn't for him. In that scripture, in the first chapter of Isaiah, if you want to, you can turn over and you can look at it for yourself there. I recommend it. You'll see in the first chapter of Isaiah, and again, from the 10th through the 13th verse there, 
that God, he told a sinful Israel, which we'll see there in that scripture, he likened to Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, that same Sodom and Gomorrah that was so sinful that he destroyed it. He likened them to Sodom and Gomorrah during that time. And he said to them not to bring any more futile offerings is what God said to them. They were coming before the Lord still with their offerings, but their hearts were not for him. And God got on them and he told them, stop doing this. Stop bringing your offerings to me. God said that they are futile. Their hearts, their hearts were more for the idols. And God, you know, essentially saying, why don't you go and take those offerings that you bring to me? Go and take them to them idols that you out there worshiping, that you out there praying to all the time. Don't be coming here to me just one day out of the week. Thinking that that means something. You out there living sinfully all this time. And then you come to me out of religion. Uh Oh, coming here out of religion to me, praying to me, singing to me. And the whole time you're doing it, your mind is elsewhere. And God said, don't be coming to me that way. You are a sinner. Your heart is given to sin. Therefore, your offerings to me, they are futile. Who will you be today? Don't, don't, be, don't be running into the church and your heart ain't for the Lord. And thinking that, that somehow God is going to respect the life that you are living. It don't work that way. Every day that we are in this world, we have to answer the question. Are we giving our best for God? Are we giving our best to God with the life that he has given to us? Are we cherishing, are we respecting what God has given to us? And are we turning around and giving it back to him? You see, Cain's character was a poor character. One that did not respect the Lord. And we see that he did not respect the Lord in his giving in how it was that he came before God. Every day is a day to give to God. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me here today? Every day that you live, it is a day for you to give to God. Mm -hmm. We should not be taking any days off from giving it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Who are you choosing to be today? Now, to give our best, the Lord has told us how it is that we should live. The Lord, he has told us how it is that we should move. The Lord has told us to move with love and not hate. Choose love, not hate. What will you choose today? We should love the fact that we are living and breathing today. Do you love that fact that you're living and breathing today? We should love the fact that God continues to make a way for us. Do you love that fact today? When we choose love, we are choosing to go the route of uplifting others by helping and, and by being supportive. Being helpful and supportive, I want you to understand today, that breathes life into those who you help and into those who you support. By being helpful and, and by being supportive, it breathes life into the world. Choosing love, it breathes life into the world. However, when we choose hate, again, we must understand that we are choosing a route that is anti-God. It is anti God's way. In other words, it is anti, it is opposite of the Lord. It is opposite of the Lord's way. Choosing hate is choosing to give to God, no help and no support. 
There will be a day when the Lord is going to turn and say, when I was sick, you didn't help me. When I didn't have, you didn't help me. That's what Jesus said in scripture. I don't want, I don't want the Lord saying that to me. Again, choose love, not hate. What will you choose today? You see, choosing hate is choosing to go in an incredibly selfish way that certainly doesn't breathe life into anybody. In fact, when you move selfishly, you are taking life from those that are around you. Therefore, when you choose hate, when you choose selfishness, what you breathe into this world is death. Is that what you desire to give to the world today? Death? This is choosing a character, I want you to understand today, that moves with great evil. Will that be your character? A sinner, one that brings death through great wickedness, and through great evil, will that be your character today? And I ask you today, which one will you choose? Will you choose love or will you choose hate? Something we often fail to realize about Cain's story is that again, he was given the same love that we received from the Lord. He I want you to understand again today. He was given the same love that you and I received from the Lord right here, right now, today. You see, after he had become so angry that his offering was not respected by God, we'll see that in the seventh verse that God, he did something. He did something that he still again does for us today. We'll see that God, he came to Cain and he spoke to Cain. Y'all see that there? Am I making that up? We'll see that in the seventh verse. God said to Cain, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do well, the Lord said there, will you not be accepted? This, I want you to understand, was God rebuking Cain. This, I want you to understand today, was God giving Cain a second chance. This was God giving Cain another opportunity. Doesn't God give us a second chance today? Doesn't God, does he, does he not give us another opportunity each and every day? See, I, I, get, I don't know how you all view life, but I view every hour, every second, every day as another chance and another opportunity to get right, not in somebody else's eyes, but to get myself right in the eyes of the Lord, my God, my maker, my creator. And there in the seventh verse, Again, we see where God was giving Cain another opportunity to get right in his eyes. So Yoda was actually wrong that the dark path, it does not, if you start down it, it does not dominate your destiny. You can get off the dark path. If you are still living, if you're still breathing today, you still have a choice that you can make. You can choose to turn off that dark path of bitterness and, and hatred. And you can choose to turn to the path that is of light. The path that is the way of Christ. The path that is the way of love. If you are on the dark path, you have a choice and an opportunity today given you to you by the Lord to where you can get off of it. And you can turn back to the light. What will you choose today? Again, like I said, character is important. Choose love, not hate. So what will you do? What will you choose to do with God's mercy? That's the question that we have to answer today. 
what will you do? What will you choose to do with God's mercy? That is incredibly important. That choice that you choose to make there. Do you make changes in your person? Or do you disregard God's rebuke? So I'm going to be very frank with all of you today when I say that some of us, we seriously, we seriously need to consider the character that we are choosing to be today. Rather than choosing love, many of us, we have chosen silver and gold. Rather than choosing love, many of us, we have chosen power. We have chosen riches. We have chosen idols. We have chosen other people, other men. Rather than choosing love, many of us who are supposed to be God's children, we have turned to hatred. And we have chosen hatred today. I don't know if you hear me here today. Rather than, than choosing God, rather than choosing one who said that he is the way, the truth, and the life, we have chosen lies. We have chosen a liar. We have chosen to be a liar. We have chosen to support a liar. We have chosen to harm others. We have chosen pride. We have chosen ego. And we, we have the audacity today to say that I know the Lord. I know his son. I'm a Christian. I've been baptized. I've been born again. Really? Have you really been born again when you choose to be a liar? I ain't going to get no amen. No, that's okay. It's okay, Walls. Y'all cry out to me. Y'all cry out for the Lord. Some of us, we have heard God's rebuke that we should love our neighbor. But we go and we look at our neighbor and we go, uh-uh, no, no, no. I can't love him. His skin black. His skin white. He got nappy hair. His hair ain't straight. His eyes ain't blue. Yeah, some of us today, we have heard God's rebuke that we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves, and we go, no way. I ain't doing it, God. We disregard the Lord as we disregard our neighbors. Some of us are moving in bitter hate today against our neighbors through, through our own actions, and then again, we are supporting the actions of those who love to move against the neighbors as well. See, it's one thing to sin unknowingly, but it's a completely different thing when you know for a fact that you are choosing to move against somebody. And yeah, I want you to understand today, when God has said that you should love him and then that you should love your neighbor as you love yourself, if you move against your neighbor, you're moving against yourself and you're moving against God as well. You have put yourself in opposition against God. Yeah, many people today are choosing to go in the way of Cain. You see, Cain, he disregarded God's rebuke and he let his anger boil over, didn't he? And we see it there in the eighth verse. Where Cain, we're told there that he rose against his brother and killed him. And then when God came to him, we'll see there in scripture, he had the audacity to say and ask, am I my brother's keeper? How sick is that? To say, am I my brother's keeper? Shouldn't we be keepers of each other today? I should be my brother's keeper. And again, when I say my brother's keeper, I ain't talking about my brother that shares the same blood as me. I'm talking about all of those that are around me. I should be looking out for them. Because again, God, he created us to unite together, to be fruitful and to multiply. That is why we were born. That is why we were made. We were made to live together, to grow together, to prosper together. Not for one man to prosper. Oh, I ain't going to get no amen there. That's okay. Many people are choosing to go in the way of Cain, and they fail to realize 
what his end was, going down that dark path. Some of us, we may be thinking to ourselves, well, pastor, I haven't gone down that path. I haven't killed anybody. I tell you that there's more ways to kill a person than by blunt objects, by knives. There are more ways to kill somebody than by just picking up a gun and, and physically taking their life. Over in the third chapter of James, if you want to turn there, you'll see this. James, he wrote in the third chapter, he wrote that the tongue is a fire. He wrote there in the sixth verse, the tongue is a world of iniquity. That is wickedness. The tongue, James said that it sets on fire the course of nature. The tongue, James said there. Then he wrote there in the eighth verse that the tongue is an unruly evil full of deadly poison, James said there. We see it today how the lying tongue is setting the world on fire. With this lies, it's, it's sitting here creating fear, creating anxiety, running people's blood pressure sky high, giving them heartaches, chest pains, driving up stress, driving up worry, causing people to panic. The lying and deceiving tongue, it abuses out of hate. It threatens and it, it brings great harm to us mentally, psychologically, emotionally, and even spiritually today. I want you to understand today, when one walks that path, again, with that lying tongue, they set themselves against the truth. They set themselves against God. And again, we must be wary. Don't be supporting no liars. You support a liar, you again, you're setting yourself up against the Lord. After he chose to kill his brother God, we know curse Cain. But look at what Cain said there in the fourth chapter of Genesis and the 13th verse there. Where Cain, after killing his brother and God cursing him, he had the nerve to say there, that his punishment was too great to bear. Look at that. He had the nerve to say that after he chose hate and killed his brother. What did he think? That he was going to get off scotch-free? Don't be crying about the time when you did the crime. Then he said there in the 14th verse, I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. Don't be crying about it now. You chose hate. When you choose that path, understand that path, it has its consequences. When you choose to turn against God, there are consequences. I want you to understand today that this is a message about character, who you will choose to be. And I ask you today, will you choose the light or will you choose the dark? You see, Cain, he chose to open up to sin and this wickedness. And he was led down a dark path where his end was condemnation. His story shouldn't be one that is glorified as some people love to glorify today. They love to make TV shows about Cain today. It should serve as a warning to everybody about choosing the dark path, about choosing to have a character that is sinful, being a sinner. Our character should be one that is of the light of God. That is what we should choose today. Again, over in 1 John and in the second chapter of 1 John. John, he stated there in the ninth verse, he stated there, he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. But then John, he said there in the 10th verse, he said, he who loves his brother abides in the light 
and there is no cause for, for stumbling in him. Let us understand when we walk in the light, when all of us together walk in the light, should one stumble, we are able to help lift them up. We're able to help lift them up from that place of love, but we aren't alone in the light. Jesus is there in the light as well, and he will never allow us to stumble. He will never allow us to fall. Here is where I remind you once again that Cain, he could have enjoyed such a life. There are many people today in the world today that can enjoy such a life. All they have to do is choose love and not hate. That is all we have to do today is choose love, not hate. Hate. I am greatly concerned today because many are choosing hate and many are choosing to walk down the dark path and they don't realize where they are going. But again, the Lord knows and we even know where it is that they are going as well. Because again, the Lord has said that whosoever believes in him will not perish. But if one does not believe they are condemned already. And so anybody that is filled with hate, anger, and bitterness today, I encourage, and I say to you, you still have the ability to choose love. And I encourage you today, choose love, choose life, choose life. Yes, in this world, but choose life everlasting as well. It is imperative today. It is imperative today that if you have chosen darkness, it is imperative for you to choose light. If you have chosen bitterness and hatred, you still have time to choose love. So again, I call on you today. I call on you to come to the light. Abide in the light. Walk in the light. And again, I tell you today, take on the character of love. Take on God's character. And by his character, you will live and all of those that are around you, they will live as well. Amen. 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 Hey, before you stop watching this video, I got one thing that I want to ask all of you to do. What is it that I want you to do? If you aren't already following this channel, I ask you today, make sure that you're following subscribe below. And if you do that, I also ask all of you make sure that you share this video, this channel with someone somewhere so that all of us can grow in our wisdom, our knowledge, and our faith in the Lord. And I ask all of you, participate in today's sermon as well. If you have any questions or any comments, don't be afraid to leave a comment below.